Hello everyone and welcome to our Tech Tuesday Tutorials number 87. Today we look at an old but amazing app that now has a cloud-based version, SketchUp. SketchUp has been around for years and for a while there it was even owned by Google. It's now owned by a company called Trimble and it's one of the easiest, most user-friendly 3D modeling applications out there. What's better is that SketchUp has a huge community and a full 3D warehouse where people can upload all of their creations and share them. You can take any of these models, download them, and open them up in SketchUp and see them in full 3D. What I love most about SketchUp is just how easy it is to use, the intuitive and clean interface and controls, and just the sheer versatility of the program. So let's give it a test run. First, you need to head on over to app.sketchup.com and create a free account. You can even use a single sign-on with your Google account. Once you've logged in and everything, click on Create New, and let's just go with a simple one with feet and inches. You'll start off with a flat plane, a single sprite here for a person, and you'll see these three lines indicating the axes. The blue axis is up and down, the green is forward and back, and the red is left and right. Of course, that's relative. You can control or rotate the camera by pressing down the middle mouse button. If you don't have the middle mouse button, you'll have to use this tool over here on the left called Orbit and switch your tool to the Orbit tool to do it that way. But you can access that Orbit tool anytime by using the middle mouse button. Again, you have to click it, not roll it. Rolling it will zoom in, but clicking it and holding it will turn your cursor temporarily into the Orbit tool, which then means you can then orbit around things. So let's start off by building something very simple. We're going to do a simple house. We're going to go over here and choose the rectangle tool. And when you click on that, you'll see that it can be any other kind of shapes. We're just going to do a basic rectangle. Then we're going to click and drag along the ground to place this rectangle. It may not look like a rectangle because we're looking at a perspective image here. But if you orbit around, you're going to see that it changes and it does look a bit more realistic there. Again, you can zoom out and rotate and use a combination of zooming and rotating to kind of pan around anywhere you'd like. You'll find that the orientation of your camera is critical to building effectively in here because it's hard to build a rectangle like this. It's much easier to build it like this. So get used to using that rotate tool a lot. So the next thing we're going to do is we need to kind of build this up. Now in a traditional kind of modeling program, you have to model all the walls and model everything else. And sometimes you really just need the exterior of the building done. You don't need to do a lot of details. Uh, SketchUp is really great because it has this wonderful magical tool called the push pull tool. And it's over here on the left hand side. It looks like a little um, box with an arrow going up. So we're going to select that one. There are some other ones like a follow me tool and an offset tool, but we won't wor worry about those today. So we're going to click on that push-pull tool, and as we hover over that surface, you'll notice it changes. It kind of becomes shaded. They'll let us know that that's the surface we're going to be interacting with. Then click and drag up as much as you like and let it go when you're satisfied. At that point, you've just made this into a three-dimensional box. Now, you can do this with any surface. I can push-pull this back. I can resize any of this. This is really, really intuitive, and I can do this any time. So the next thing I want is um, I'd like to bisect this and get kind of a roof, a sloping roof. How do I do that? Well, you could do it by building it with lines and all that, or you can, again, kind of extract and extrude a bit here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the pencil tool here, the line tool, and as you hover over this, you're going to see that it kind of snaps to an edge that allows you to draw on an edge. And as you're going along, sometimes it even changes the color and it says this is the end point. Okay, well, if that's the end point, maybe there's a midpoint. Let's see. Oh, yeah, there it is. As I go over there, it snaps and shows midpoint. Well, I want to line from the midpoint here to the midpoint over there. So I'm going to go over here and click. And then now it's going to uh, kind of snap to this green. Why is it going green? Because that's going along this axis. Notice that that green axis, that means I know it's going back in that direction. It's going to be parallel to these lines. That's good. And I can move it all the way back there to the midpoint there. If you are having trouble with this because your angle is weird, um, like this, this gets to be a little bit more difficult. Remember, you can rotate to see better and adjust. Also, if you hold down shift while you've got that green, it will lock into that no matter how much you move your mouse, it'll still lock into that axis if you're holding shift. So I'm gonna go over here and click on this one. And now that kind of looks like a, uh, a box. <laughs> uh, I'd like to, uh, to, to get this to be you know, kind of a, a peaked roof. Well, here's the magic again. You can use the move tool and move this line. Well, normally if you, you think you move this line, it's just gonna move it off of this and there'll be a floating line up here. But SketchUp uses this kind of 
sticky geometry, which means that things kind of stay together uh, as you move them and push them and pull them. So if I go over here and pull this up, I can click on this and move it up. Uh, after a bit, it's gonna it's gonna do that. Now the problem is, I can, you know I can really mess up my house like this if I move things around too much. So how do I make sure it goes straight up? Well, I can follow the blue axis. So here's the thing: as I move this up, I'm gonna look until I see this snap, and I also want to see that this dotted line is blue. Notice it's black. It turns a different color, and then blue, and it says on blue axis. Now again, if I'm using that shift. I can force it to stay on the blue axis as I move up no matter how much I deviate from that. So now I've got a nice little roof on there and I've got a basic shape. Cool. Uh, we're going to go and do it, put a door. We're going to use this rectangle to create a door. We're going to just drag out a shape for the door and I'll use her for, for scale. Now maybe that needs to be a little bit bigger. That's fine. I can use the move tool to move this further up. Okay, it's a slightly bigger door, right? But that's kind of a cheesy looking door. It doesn't really kind of fit there. Maybe it needs to be a little bit wider. And it just looks drawn on. I want it 3D. So again, push pull tool. Come in here and I'm going to move this inset just a little bit. So now that's a door sitting in there. I'd like some windows and I'd like to be able to maybe see inside. So I'll use this rectangle tool. And I would like to also inset that because windows do walls do have a certain amount of thickness there. Now, um, whenever I'm doing this, notice that um, I, you know, I can go in, I can even go out and make this an extrusion or something like that. But I'm going to go on in a little bit. And the amount of movement you're doing here is actually shown at the bottom. So this is a distance of zero. So if I push in, notice it's going in six and one sixteenth inches, four inches, and stuff like that. If I want it to be precise, I can move it and immediately after I let it go I just type in so I can say I need this to go in uh, four inches uh, into the wall and then hit enter and it corrects the last thing you did to be that exact amount and by the way this works for other things so if I say okay I want a window and I want this window to be two feet by four feet I can say two feet comma four feet and it will be like that. Now that obviously uh, is oriented wrong. So I can undo control Z and do it again. And this time I'm going to say this is now four feet by two feet since I know it's going to be left uh, horizontal first. So four feet comma two feet. And that is a four foot by two foot window. In fact, I can even use measuring tools over here. This one here looks like a tape measure to actually uh, check that. And I look over there and sure enough, that is four feet because I see it at the bottom um, and so on. Um, you can even use this one to get you get yourself a dimension tool and click on a line and then drag down and it will measure it and even label it and leave that there on your model. You can use the eraser tool to erase things and elements like windows or whatever else. Now let's say I want this to be gone. Um, I can select this and I can just hit the delete key on my keyboard and it will be gone and I can see inside. Um, also, I could just paint that a certain texture and tell it that I want it to be a transparent texture. That's over there with a the fill bucket and I can come over here and look at different colors uh, and textures and so on. That's the basics of SketchUp. What's great about this is that anybody can use this. Uh, this is free, this part of SketchUp. Now there's a lot more features that cost a little bit of money, but just to get this, that's simple. Now I can go up here and give it a name and I'll just call this, uh, I'll go into my SketchUp projects and I'm just gonna call this Starter House and I can save it. And now it's saved in, my, in the cloud, it's saved there. This is all cloud-based, so that you can do this on a Chromebook. So kids can be 3D modeling for free on a Chromebook there, but they can also download models that other people have used from the 3D warehouse and say, okay, I like this chair, I wanna use this chair, or I like this building here. So they can then go into there, download that model, and download as a SketchUp model, and then when they want to, they can come in here to their home page on SketchUp, open a model from their computer, and then grab that model that they just downloaded and open it up in SketchUp. Now, depending on how complicated the model is, it might take a moment to load, but you know, still, they can then use the orbit tool, pan around it and everything else, zoom in uh, and see it from any angle um, or any kind of detail level, zoom level. Crazy stuff. And then they can continue to modify this. They can build this. They can use this as a starting point for one of their models. They can place their own folks in here and everything else. Okay, let's see some examples and then we're gonna end the episode. Again, I'm trying to keep this as short as I can. I could spend maybe five hours on SketchUp. It's awesome. So some of the examples that we had here, I mean, some sometimes you, you'll say, I, I wanna see historical items or geographical items or famous places. Uh, we can do that. 
Current events recently in Notre Dame Cathedral was on fire. Kids may want to know a bit more about that. We can talk about architecture and the flying buttresses and so on. Um, this is a simple rendering of it. I know it looks a little bit more complicated, but that's actually photographic texture on there just to give it a little bit more detail. It's really just a few simple boxes. That's about it with these buttresses is the most complicated thing here. This one here of Stonehenge is another great example of using really good textures to convey a lot more detail than the model would normally have. But man, just being able to see this like this uh, in, in any orientation is pretty awesome. By the way, there is a walk tool here, so you can come over here and choose the, uh, to walk within this uh, this model. First, you'll probably want to uh, position your camera and place yourself there. Um, and so you put the camera there and then you can select the uh, walk tool and then you can walk around the, the model. You can even use the um, eye tool there to look around this model of the Great Pyramid is absolutely amazing. Um, they modeled all the inside of here. Um, and so you, you realize just how empty the pyramid is um, in a sense, I mean, just how, or how solid it is really. And you get to see some of these little details. That's just so wonderful. Uh, another tool that's very helpful is the pan tool. In fact, sometimes if I really want to explore a model, I'll activate the pan tool as my main clicking cursor. And that lets you pan it around, just kind of move the paper. You combine that with zooming in and with orbit, and you can basically see anything from any angle and move things around and kind of really explore the shape. So this SketchUp model is a great one for showing scale. If um, Musefi is a red giant, and if it were the size of a 20-story office building, then our sun would be uh, the size of a pool cue ball. And our sun, of course, is millions of times larger than our Earth. So it's just kind of crazy to think of that sense of scale and size. And SketchUp does a really good job with this. Um, you can take an object and you can change the scale of it and you can be precise just like you did with the window measurements. So teaching that geometric concept sometimes is really easily done in 3D. Speaking of teaching things in 3D, sometimes we have to teach concepts in geometry like cross sections. It does have this. Um, I can do another video on how to do cross sections, but I just want to show you that it's possible. And you can even set up scenes so that you can basically animate a few things and set up a particular view. So if I wanted to, I could then show what this looks like if you did a cross section into a pyramid and uh, did not go down the middle. So that creates a trapezoidal shape. Um, also, if you were completely down the middle, it would then create a triangular shape. Uh, these are part of the standards uh, we're teaching and also a horizontal cut coming down and what that looks like. Um, but of course you can then just take over at any time and show from any angle. You can move this cross section just by using the move tool after you've set up a cross section and cross, cross cut into any object at any angle that you want. Another really good cross sectional concept that's hard to kind of convey to students is cones and hyperbolas. Uh, so this hyperbola, this is a cross cut of if you were to cut to a cone, this is this is actually how it shows a hyperbola. Of course, the polygonal count is pretty low, so you, this is supposed to be a smooth curve, but of course you're just getting the, the rough idea here. But yeah, as you change that, you can see as you cut it at a different angle here, you see another hyperbola. And if you cut it straight down, you really just have a circle of increasing or decreasing diameter uh, based on where you're at on the cone. Last but not least is this one's one of my favorites to teach the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem is, you know, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, how do we get that? That's actually, that's actually going to be proven in a geometric way, which is actually kind of crazy. So in this case, the Pythagorean theorem says the area of the square built upon the hypotenuse of a right triangle is equal to the sum of the areas of the squares built here. So this helps kind of demonstrate that as we look at this uh, a little bit more detailed. So we can see um, if this was 16 units, because this is four and 16 plus nine is equal to 25. You can see it in a geometrical uh, solution there. Right, so that's a whirlwind tour of SketchUp. Um, again, it's been out for a long, long time, but they now have a web-based version and that's been out for a little while too. But uh, the web-based version is free. They do kind of prompt you to upgrade for some of the other tools that they have, and that's fine if you want to do that. They do have some educational licenses and stuff like that if you want, but I'm focusing on this one that we can just start up today and head on over there. Again, it's at app.sketchup.com and it's free and it works on Chromebooks and your kids should be out there using it. It's awesome. So I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful. And if you did, go ahead and click that like button. Heck, why not support us? Click that subscribe button. Click on the bell icon if you want to receive email notifications when Tech Tuesdays go up. Leave a comment or an idea for a Tech Tuesday video below. Share this video with your friends and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.